Western Refining, fueling our lives. Checking in for East Carolina, number 25, Brandon Stiff. McGregor underneath, spinning and laying it in. McGregor, the big guy. Hasn't played well early to start the season, but over the last 10, 12 games, he's averaging 10.6 rebounds, so he's really helping them out inside. Best shooter in the league at 61%, and that makes it 13 to 5, Roadrunners. Campbell bumped as he tried to make a move, and Devin Agassi will Calls pick up one of ETSA. his first foul. Devin Agassi, his first personal, first team foul on the Roadrunners. That's what Campbell needs to do. He's a big guard. Good driver. He's already taken a couple threes early and settled there. He needs to attack off the dribble and get to the basket and draw some fouls. Richmond, a deep three. Too strong. And Keon Lewis grabs another rebound. Just over 15 minutes. They find McGregor underneath again. Lays it in. And he'll go to the line for a chance at the three-point play. The foul on Caleb the White. Foul's on the Pirates, number two, Caleb White. His first, that's His first the personal, second now. Foul on East Carolina. McGregor to and the Enrico line McGregor averaging almost eight points a game at the line, looking for his fifth of the night. The ECU trying to switch something up, trying to throw them off, goes man the last two possessions. Enrico McGregor just gets good position inside and finishes. 16 to 5, 11 point lead and a steal. Taken away by Jones. Gives to Agassi, and his layup Number is good. Agassi. And Jeff Lebo wants timeout. a timeout. East Carolina. Another Pirate turnover, leading to a transition bucket. Agassi with five early on, timeout. and it's a 13 point lead for UTSA, not quite five minutes into the opening half. And this is amazing. That's a great call by Brooks Thompson right there to go zone, kind of a three-quarter court trap just to throw ECU off a little bit. They get a steal. Augusti gets out in transition. Big-time finish and a 13-point lead five, less than five minutes into the game. I mean, this is not the start that ECU or anybody expected. 18-5, to five, Roadrunners. And they'll keep the pressure on. Pirates East Carolina inbounds. Robinson away to White. Robinson will bring it across. Roadrunners settle back into the man-to-man -man now. Robinson finds Campbell around to Richmond, but underneath the basket before the shot went up, a whistle and a foul. On the Roadrunners. Falls on the Roadrunners, number 20, Enrico McGregor. It'll be on McGregor. His first personal foul, 13. Jockeying for position foul. underneath. First on McGregor. Pirates That's basketball. number two now on UTSA Checking as Pirates, Prince, Williams four, Prince Williams checks into the game for, 11, for the Antonio Pirates, Robinson. replacing Antonio Robinson. Williams, the 6'5", 200-pound sophomore out of Raleigh, North Carolina. And now the Roadrunners. Checking in for the Roadrunners. Will send in Kai Bjorn Sherman. The seven-footer out of Washington State. McGregor. Pirates get it in. Stith lost the handle. Taken away by the Roadrunners. Here's Lewis losing the handle briefly, but getting it back. And now they'll set it up in the half court with the 13-point lead. 14 and a half minutes remaining here in the first half. Pirates back in the zone now. And 10 on the shot clock. Jones with it to Agussi. Now Lewis launches the three. Richmond goes up high to pull down the miss. 
Williams in the front court to Richmond. Couldn't get the three off. Campbell off a wicked screen. Finds a wide open wide in the corner who couldn't dock down the three. And then a foul on East Carolina on the Fouls rebound. The Pirates, number 25, Brandon Stiff. His first It'll go on foul. Brandon Stiff. Foul the Pirates. Back in His Greece, first, Carolina, that's the third now on Michael Zangieri. East Carolina and Zangieri returns for ECU replacing Caleb White. So still an 18 to five lead for UTSA approaching 13 and a half minutes to go here in the first period. Jones in the lane, knocked away, but a foul. And he'll be going to the line. And I think this zone is just too passive right now. They look, they're kind of just standing there, letting them swing the ball around. They're not forcing any action. They're not making you know, UTSA uncomfortable. Foul. And so they're able to move the ball around, get it into the high Going post. The they're doing UTSA, whatever they want right now. Richmond Jones picks up his first two. foul, and Phillip Jones will go back to the line. 0 of 2 already tonight from the stripe. Roadrunners are the third best free throw shooting team in the league. Jones notwithstanding as he's 0 for 3. He's got two that have just grazed the rim. Still 18 to 5. Jones does get the roll that time for his third point of the night. 14 point Roadrunner advantage. And pressure again. Williams gets it across. Finds Richmond in the lane to Stiff. Blocked. Richmond retrieves at midcourt. Here's Campbell out to Richmond and his second Number three one, of the night. That's what Campbell needs to do. He's a driver, gets into that paint, and then Richmond, he knows how to locate, relocate. He's a big-time shooter, gets his feet set, knocks down his second three of the night. East Carolina with its second three ball. They average more than eight per game this year. 13-minute mark of the first half. Agassi trying to answer, and he does. Number and ECU, one, they just need Agassi to close out a little three. more aggressive, a little get a high, hand up higher. UTSA is just too comfortable right now taking these shots. 22 to 8, Richmond warming up. His Number third one, three of the night. Uh, both these teams, not the best field goal defensive teams, so there's going to be a lot of points tonight, but Richmond, an elite level shooter, showing you why. He's got nine on three, three pointers. Nearly stolen. Agassi just inside the arc. Knocks down Agassi. another jumper. Agassi, I can't believe he is a walk-on guard for this team. He's second leading scorer. Plays with a lot of heart, a lot of energy. He's a big-time scorer. 13-point lead now for the Roadrunners. Williams with it. Throws it away, but a whistle and a foul on UTSA will... Number one, Help Agassi. the Pirates avoid the turnover. That's on Agassi. That's his second. Three and number three of the half runners. on the road runners. It'll be a big foul sending him to the bench to see if they keep him there for the rest of the half or they decide to bring him back with two fouls. Haji Thomas into the game now for UTSA. 12 minutes to go in the first half. 24-11, the road runners with the lead. Williams for the Pirates. To Zangari out high. The big man finds White working down the lane, throws up an off balance shot, but draws the foul and will go to the line. Fouls After the, the timeout, Sherman, Sherman picks up the foul. That is his first and the fourth of the half on UTSA. 11 47 to go. Following local supporters of this year's CUSA Basketball Championships, Supreme Laundry. Western Refining, Howdy's, Hunt Companies. Be sure to visit one of the merchandise stands on the East Concourse behind Section C and D to pick up your championship merchandise provided by Event One. There's a wide variety of apparel and commemorative items featuring the Conference USA logo and the logo of your favorite team. Millions of people living as foes. Maybe it's not too late to learn how to love and forget how to hate. Mental wounds not healing, like a bitter shame. I'm going. 
Akeem Richmond trying almost single-handedly to keep the Pirates in this first half. ECU trailing 24 to 11, but Richmond with nine of the Pirates 11 points to start this game. He's already three of five from deep, halfway to tying that record. Big time shooter. Caleb White at the line. Hits the first, 71%. One more for White. For White, and just over 71% for East Carolina on the year as a team from the foul line. That is best in Conference USA. White gets them both. He's got four. It's been Richmond and White accounting for all 13 Pirate points. 11-point lead for the Roadrunners. Thomas in there running the point now for the Roadrunners. Lewis with it now. ECU just looks a little more energetic, this, this possession right here. Coach Lebel probably got on him that time out. They just came out with a little more energy. Lewis. Contact, but no whistle. Finds Sims, who missed the driving attempt, and that'll be a shot clock violation. Shot clock violation. Pirates basketball. More enthusiastic, as you said that time on the defensive end yeah, for East Carolina. They're just more active. They're jumping around. Their hands are up. Guys are flying in passing lanes, and they get a 35-second shot clock violation. So the Pirates trying to cut the deficit to single digits. Robinson back in there for East Carolina. White with it now. Looking to Zangary. Gets it to him on the block. Robinson with it in the corner. He'll drive on Sherman, who commits his second foul. Yeah, and that's exactly what they have to do. UTSA, they're switching ball Balls screens, so there's a lot of mismatches on the court. And if Robinson, your point guard, is matched up with a seven-foot center, get out of the way and let him drive the basket. Back so the they do that exactly there. They draw a foul. That's smart basketball. Sherman. Sherman checks Pirates out as basketball. McGregor returns now for UTSA. Checking in for UTSA. George Matthews also coming into the game. George Matthews, the 6'5", 220-pound sophomore out of Phoenix. 10.47 to go in the first half. Deflected on the inbounds and stolen. And ahead to Thomas. He'll lay it in for his Number first two, two of the night. Haji Fifth turnover Thomas. for ECU already. Not doing themselves any favors. Doubling up the Pirates now with 10 and a half minutes to go before halftime. White grabbed and fouled by Thomas. Balls on the Roadrunners, number we had a handful two, of jerks. Thomas. His, His first, first that's now the sixth of the half. Fouls on UTSA. on UTSA. That's a call he saw basketball. a lot in November. You haven't seen much here in February or March, and Coach Thompson did not like that one. Pirates down 13 with the ball. White with it, finds Richmond. He'll work off a screen and launch another three. His fourth Number of the first half. Richmond Nothing three. but bottom of the net. Again, they're trying to switch ball screens. He sees a mismatch. Big time score. He just hits him with a little crossover and drills a three right in his face. Midpoint of the first half, and it's a 10-point game. Roadrunners trying to figure out that pirate zone now, and a whistle stops play as Stiff Balls picks up Pirates, his second foul of the night. And Stiff. number five now on East his Carolina personal foul. as Prince William comes back in, back in for along the Pirates, with Paris Roberts Campbell, Paris Roberts replacing Campbell. Stiff and Antonio Robinson. Roadrunners basketball. Roadrunners inbound. Lewis finds Thomas out high. Lewis finds Thomas again. This time the baseline jumper won't fall. And East Carolina could not get a handle on the UTSA rebound. UTSA basketball. It'll stay with the Roadrunners and a fresh shot clock. They get it into Sims. And now Lewis helps run the show. Around to Matthews. Lewis trying to penetrate. The dish out to Thomas. And a three-second three violation. Violation. Pirates basketball. 
And the Roadrunners, without a Gussie in the game, seem to have slowed up a little bit offensively the last few trips. Yeah, that was very a very stagnant possession. They didn't have any action. There's no movement. They just kind of thrown the ball around the perimeter. And I think it was a good call. You don't see it often, a three-second violation, but they were just camped out in the paint. Zangari in the lane. The left-hand hook too strong. And McGregor clears it for UTSA. Still a 10-point Roadrunner lead. Matthews has his pass deflected, saved in by Sims. And now Lewis, top of the key, another three good. Keon Lewis for three. Keon Lewis, the Juco transfer. He's had a couple of those looks tonight where nobody's near him. He's kind of just casually stepping into it, and he's, he's a capable, capable shooter. Fifth three-pointer of the first half for the Roadrunners, and it's back to a 13-point lead. Williams tried the bounce pass, and they'll say it's off Zangari out of bounds. Yeah, I thought it went Roadrunners off GSA basketball. defender's foot, but the ref, I think, thought it hit Zangari's as well. But another careless turnover for ECU. So a chance for the Roadrunners to stretch the lead back out at 13. Near steal, and the Pirates do come away with the deflection. Williams gets it ahead to Paris Roberts Campbell. Pretty hesitation, and he'll lay it in. He just knows Paris how to get Roberts to the basket. Campbell. He's a strong physical guard. Good, good move in transition, just attacking the basket. First two of the night for Paris Roberts Campbell. Roadrunners by 11, and Lewis draws another foul. This one on Prince Falls Williams. On the number four, Prince Williams. That'll be his first, his first and the sixth foul. of the half. On the, on the Pirates. Time out. Official time out on the floor. Conference USA hey, would like to go. express our gratitude to the El Paso community for their hospitality and support of this championship. Special recognition goes to the El Paso Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Sun Bowl, and the UTEP Athletic Department. Conference USA would like to thank the following local supporters of this year's CUSA Basketball Championships. Glazers, Allen F Distributors, Superior Imaging Experts. Roadrunners basketball. Including five of six from three-point range. ECU's 15th in the conference in field goal defense, but it's only around about 45%, not 78%. Great start for the Roadrunners. Thomas dribbles out of trouble. Open in the corner, Matthews, but he goes up and Traveling down with violation. it. East Carolina. It's twice basketball. now they've come out of timeouts with more energy. So I don't know if they're telling them what's going to be called in, this, in the timeout or if they just jump on them and the guys kind of respond to, to being criticized, then it's been working. So if they can maintain that for the next seven minutes here and keep playing the zone that actively, they'll get back into this game. That's the sixth turnover, the first half on the Roadrunners. Williams. Finds Richmond, another three. That one off the mark. You're more surprised when they don't go in. I'm just, team I'm just surprised they keep letting them get looks. I mean, put a guy on him and have him face guard and make someone, uh, someone else beat you. McGregor running down the lane 20. with the McGregor. left hand up and in. McGregor showing you why he shoots 60% in, in the league, leads the league. He just gets to the basket. And he's got great touch around the rim. Harris Roberts Campbell bumped and fouled. 
as he made the drive. Fouls on number 22, the Roadrunners. It'll go on George, George Matthews. Matthews. His first personal. That's his first. Number Back seven the now on the Roadrunners. So this will be a one-on-one one opportunity for Roberts George Campbell. Matthews. 75% Going to the line for the Pirates, free throw shooter on the season. Roberts Campbell to shoot two. Correction, one and one. Both teams done a decent job of not putting the other on the foul line here in the first half. The Pirates Roberts now Campbell three of three bonus. from the line after that make by Campbell. He averages almost 12 a game. Makes it a 12-point margin with 7.02 to go in the half. His bonus. Campbell already with the four. Last time they played, he only had two points in their 10-point victory. Seven-minute mark of the first half and an 11-point Roadrunner lead. They throw over the pressure. Lewis to McGregor. Now to Sims for a three. That one's good. 32. Jordan, Jordan Sims, he's Sims got 154 three-point three, three field goals in his career. He's moving up their list in their all-time standing, so he's a very, very capable shooter as well. Another wide open look for Richmond, and that One. is number five. The senior does not want to go down this way. He's keeping his team in this game with five threes already. One away from the record in the first 14 minutes of this game. 34-23, 11-point lead for UTSA. Thomas. Jones tried to get it into McGregor once again, but broken up ETSA basketball. by the Pirates the as Pirates, Antonio, 11, Robinson Antonio Robinson comes back in, replacing the freshman Caleb, two, White. Caleb White. I just don't, I just can't understand how UTSA is not locating Akeem Richmond. He's, he's one of the best shooters in the history of the NCAA from, from a made field three-point field goal standpoint, and he's been open all night long. They get it into McGregor, point blank range McGregor. again. Yeah, it's just a very simple crossing action right there in the out of bounds play. Move the ECU defender out of the way, received a simple bounce pass and goes up for the dunk. McGregor having a solid night on the inside. His shooting percentage going up. Zangary will be going to the line. Fouls on the Roadrunners, number 20, McGregor. His McGregor second has his foul. second foul now 18 here in the first the half. To the line for the Pirates, number 34, number eight Michael Zangieri. On UTSA is a team, two. but this will be a two-shot opportunity for Zangieri. 68% shooter from the strike. as his first point of the evening. Back in for the Roadrunners, number 45, Ty Bjorn Sherman. Sherman returns. Number 20, Enrico McGregor. As McGregor will sit at least for a while with those two fouls. And Sherman's not a bad back. He's a seven-footer. He's a big guy. Sometimes you think a a lot of those guys are just stiffs, but he's a very capable player. He can move for a seven-footer, and so McGregor going to the bench shouldn't hurt him that much. Pretty spin move by Thomas, but he couldn't finish. Sims couldn't get the follow-up to go. Batted out to Keon Lewis, and the Roadrunners will reset. Seems all the loose balls are going UTS's way tonight. Wide open lane for Philip Jones. Jones. They get a second-chance shot. The seed parts for him. He takes it right to the cup. Five for Jones, 13-point lead again for UTSA. Just under five and a half minutes to go before intermission. Richmond, a deep three, that time off the mark, and Sims flags down the miss. 38-25, Roadrunners. Lewis with it around the perimeter. And their guards need to do more on the perimeter. All they do is just stand at wing, point, wing, just pass it to each other. They need to cut through, Paul's go to the, the baseline, do a little baseline drift, maybe screen for each other, just get Richmond. some more movement so they, ECU His doesn't know where they are at all times. And Lewis's drive the there Pirates. draws the second foul Going of the night the on Akeem Richmond. Number, 44, number seven Lewis. on the Pirates, so this will Shooting be a one-on-one one one opportunity one. for Keon Lewis, who is the fourth best free throw shooter in Conference USA at 84% on the year. And I don't even think Coach Lebo is even looking at anyone on his bench to take Akeem Richmond out of the way he's shooting right now. And they're playing zone, so he'll, he'll be safe in that 3-2 zone that they play. Won't be able to draw a lot of fouls. One more for Lewis. Lewis hits the front end. 20th in the league in scoring at just a shade under 13 points a game. Lewis hits them both. He's got eight, the lead to 15 now. 
for UTSA. Richmond ahead to Robinson. And now the Roadrunners give the Pirates a taste of their own medicine with a zone. Robinson's jumper from the foul line. Cleared by Sherman. Four and a half remaining in the opening period. And the Roadrunners, with their largest lead of the game, look to stretch it out even more. Sims with it behind the arc. Around on the far side to Jones. They swing it around once again. That three rims out, but Thomas goes sailing Number in two. for the follow-up. Haji, Haji Thomas, Thomas, only 6'1". The guard is an elite athlete. Got up for that rebound in the tipping. 17-point lead for the Roadrunners at the four-minute mark of the first half. Campbell answers with a three. Number Campbell 22. finally gets a three to drop his third Campbell one attempt of the night. Known more as a driver, but that's a big-time bucket right there to keep this within smelt sniffing distance. 14 points, the lead now for the Roadrunners. The lob to Sherman, and he is undercut by one of the Pirates. They'll tag Prince Williams with Balls his Pirates, second foul four, of the first half. That'll be the eight and a one-and-one one upcoming official for Kai Bjorn Sherman. I would like, like to thank the following local supporters of this year's CUSA Basketball, basketball Championships. Menchies, Costco, DSI Graphics. Lucchese Boots, proud supporter of Conference USA Basketball Championship. Best boot in town with convenient locations throughout El Paso. Lucchese has hardworking, fun-loving, knowledgeable group of individuals who are ready to serve you. She had me feeling like she's ready to blow. Carolina number two, Caleb White. At the line, number 45, Kai Bjorn Sherman to shoot. 42% from the floor, almost 43 from three as Sherman hits the one front end. Sherman. One and one. Yeah, ECU is doing enough offensively to be in this game. It's just they have to get a stop somehow defensively, whether they're playing zone, whether they're playing man, close out on the shooters, make them miss a shot, and then get the rebound. Sherman has his first two of the night. 16-point Roadrunner lead and a travel. Traveling violation. Pressure again UTSA by the Roadrunners, and that is turnover number eight of the night on ECU. Yeah, ECU is just all out of sorts right now. They, they don't look comfortable on the court. Their body language is, is bad. The bench has no energy. They need something good for them to happen to get back into this game before halftime and cut into the 16-point lead. Three and a half minutes to go before halftime. Lewis trying to add to that lead. Doesn't get the roll. Sherman can't get the tip to fall. And it's cleared by Caleb White. Quickly up the floor and another turnover. Lewis ahead to Thomas. And one. Number two, Haji Thomas. Basket is good. Six for Thompson, Haji Thomas. Carolina, Caleb Coming in for a Gussie who picked foul. up his second foul. And that's when things sort of... Carolina. 
cooled off for the Roadrunners just a little bit, but Thomas has really ignited things again for the Roadrunners. Yeah, and he averages nine points per game, so he, he's a good player for them. He had 11 the last time these two teams play, but they are making then ECU pay every time there's a turnover. That foul on Caleb White was his second, the ninth. Wide open look again for Richmond. Couldn't finish that time. But a rebounding foul on the Roadrunners. On the Roadrunners. His first personal foul. 19 foul. Richmond's a little runners. upset with himself the after that one. He was so wide open. He probably slowed his shot yeah. down just a little bit too much there. But he's 5 of 10 on the day. He'll take 50% any day, any day of the week. Sims called for the foul as Stiff, Stiff earns the ball. toes the line for the 1-1. One and one. Four Pirates with two fouls in the first half. Stiff gets both ends of the one and one, a 54% free throw shooter. And it's a 16-point Roadrunner lead at the three-minute mark of the opening half. Sims with it back to Lewis. Lewis left alone, couldn't knock down that three. And Stiff shoots it ahead to Williams. Good find underneath to White for the lay-in. Pretty basketball right there. And if ECU can get out back in transition, they thrive there. And that was a great drop-down pass by Williams. 46-32. Lewis gets it to Thomas in the lane. Off Sherman's fingertips and another roadrunner turnover. Campbell spotting up for the three. That one's good. ECU can score in a hurry on you. They've done it all season long. Now they've got some life. Make it back down to an 11-point game. Once you see the ball go through on the offensive end, you're a lot more active, more bouncy on the defensive end, and your team kind of just snowball effects. You start playing better. Seventh three of the first half for the Pirates. Lewis driving, throws up a wild shot, and ahead it goes to Campbell. Grabbed and fouled, and that's going to be an intentional foul. Intentional foul is the call. So it'll be two Number shots two the and the ball for the Pirates. Haji Thomas His called for the intentional, foul, not the making runners. a play really for the ball. Yeah, it was a little aggressive, and that's probably why he got the intentional call. He was trying not to let Paris Roberts Campbell get the shot off, but. I thought he was making a play on the ball, but it was it was a little aggressive, and I could see why the refs called it intentional. Brooks Thompson not happy with the call. Campbell too strong. Ten points for him in the first half. And with a minute 50 to go, East Carolina can cut it to 10. And Campbell does. And now they can get it to single digits. Pirates basketball. Yeah, After you, the intentional foul. If you had told me before the game, Keem Richmond's going to have five threes in the first half, I would never have guessed they would be down 16 points at that, <laughs> at that time. But they remain calm. Finally get it in and turn it over. A hurried basketball. pass by Williams trying to beat the five-second count, and he bounces it into the UTSA bench. And it looks like Campbell maybe jammed a finger or something there. He's a little slow walking back down the court. So the Roadrunners, not the worst thing that could have happened in that sequence as they give up just the one point and still have a 10-point lead with a minute 45 to go in the half. Thomas with it, playing catch with Lewis. Into Sherman. Tapped into the hands of Williams, who wants to run. Campbell with it. Out to another wide open look for Richmond. Sherman clears it. And Brooks Thompson wants a timeout. The Roadrunners' shooting percentage may have dwindled down to about 60% now in the first half in Brooks Thompson. Wants to talk things over with a minute 19 to go. That's a good call for a timeout right there. Things, the team's probably getting a little bit complacent with this big lead. You got a couple of sloppy offensive possessions where you got nothing out of it. But they've done a good job defensively. Um, hopefully they can build on this lead here. 
46-36, and the Pirates, on the other hand, really have done a nice job of not panicking. This one could have gotten away from them very quickly, but they have battled right back into yeah, it. Yeah, a lot of times you'll see coaches just going nuts on the sideline when their teams aren't showing any life. But Coach Lebo has done this for a long time. He's, he knows it's a long game, and he's, he's stuck with the game plan. He's, he's stayed in the zone, even though UTSA is shooting so well. A lot of times you see other coaches panic and throw out another defense they have and just try to be more gimmicky, but he's sticking to his guns and, and knowing what his team can do best. Just over a minute to go before halftime. And a foul on Campbell as the Pirates have extended that defense now. That's number two on Campbell. Yeah, that's just not a smart foul, 40 feet from the basket. I, I like that he's going for a steal, trying to be active, trying to get his team going, but you know they're shooting the double bonus. You, you can't grab a guy's arm that far from the basket and send him to the line for some free points. Both teams now in the double bonus. Free throw short. One more for Sims. From Sims. 113 to go in the half. Sims 57% on the year, and he gets a friendly bounce on the second one. He's got seven now here in the opening half. 11 points the lead now for UTSA. As we tick down to the final minute of the first half. White. They get it to Richmond. Campbell in the lane. Muscles that one up and in. That was just a phenomenal offensive possession against the 2-3 zone. The ball was moving, never stopped in anybody's hands. Just whipping around against the zone. They got it inside to the middle and got an easy point-blank shot. Nine-point lead now for UTSA. Final 40 seconds of the half. Lewis with it. Gets it back from Phillip Jones. Shot clock at 12. Lobbing inside, too tall for Sherman, who looked like he got his legs tangled up just a little bit. And so now, East Carolina will have the final opportunity of the half. 47-38, the Roadrunners. Coach Lieber wants him to go at 10 seconds here. Williams near midcourt. Gets it going with seven. Spinning, throws it up with a right hand. Tip no good. And the first half will come to an end. It's half time. With the Roadrunners hanging on to a nine-point lead. They had it up to as many as 17. But credit to Pirates for remaining patient, cutting it down to single digits with his with as big a margin as it was, that's not a bad spot to be in at halftime. Yeah, all things considered, you know, as sluggish as they came out, as hot as UTSA has shot the ball, to be down only nine at half, I think ECU, that's a, that's a margin that's, you know, they can come back in the second half that they've probably done before and they overcome some of these deficits. But UTSA has just done an amazing job offensively, getting out in transition to off the steals and turnovers, getting some easy baskets that way. And they shot lights out too from, from the perimeter. Once again, our halftime score. UTSA, the number 13 seed, leading East Carolina, the 12 seed, 47-38. Stay tuned later on. We'll have halftime stats and get you ready for the second half. This is the 2014 Conference USA Basketball Championship live from El Paso, Texas on the CUSA Digital Network.
a treat for you here at halftime. It's called Bounce and Score. We direct your attention now to the court. We've got two contestants on one end. Noah will be on the blue ball, and Shawnee will be on the red. They'll bounce to midcourt, then hop off, run, pick up the basketballs, and the first one to score is our winner. Noah and Johnny, are you ready? Bring the action. Set, go! Cheer on, fans, Noah and Johnny, here we go. Keep it going. Okay, climb on off, here we go. First one to score is the winner. How about that? Is that Johnny? Johnny was the first to score. Congratulations. That was impressive. How about it for Noah and Johnny fans? Fifteen minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. See how much you could save when you visit Geico.com for your free rate quote. Geico is the official insurance company of Conference USA. The Conference USA Championships are brought to you by your neighbors at Phillips 66. Fueling the neighborhood with performance gas and just about everything else like we have been for the past 80 years. Phillips 66, proud to be here. Brought to you by Gatorade, the G-Series Fuels Conference USA. Prime, perform, recover. Three fuels for three stages of the game. Nike is the official ball supplier of Conference USA. Conference USA and its member institutions would like to thank Nike for its support. Fans, be sure to grab your 2014 Conference USA Basketball Championship Souvenir Program. It's absolutely free, and it's filled with information about Conference USA players and teams, including rosters, statistics, and news of interest. Conference USA fans, be sure to visit the Cincinnati District Fan Fest across Mesa Street this week. Starting at 1.30 p.m. each day, fans can enjoy a spirited family atmosphere with visiting pep bands, spirit squads, and local entertainment. Visit utepathletics.com for details. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Sunshine, she's here, you can take a break. I'm a hot air balloon that could go to space. With the air, like I don't care, baby, by the way. Huh. Because I'm happy. Clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. Because I'm happy. Clap along if 
talk about the Pirates of East Carolina. Let's welcome back the Roadrunners of UTSA. Across the way at Memorial Gym in the Conference USA Women's Tournament, congratulations to UTSA. 90 to 89 winners over Tulsa this evening.
East Carolina basketball to start the second half. Robinson for ECU finds Richmond. Robinson once again pulls up from the foul line and it's cleared by McGregor. Agussi back in there, got off to a good start, but ran into foul trouble in the first half. Agussi from the top of the key. They get it down to Lewis in the corner, in trouble, double teamed to McGregor. Finds Sims all alone for a three. They had the guy dead to rights in the corner in a great double team. You can't let a guy split you. Once that happens, the team is so overloaded on the one side trying to rotate to cover for everybody else, that leaves Sims wide open in the corner to knock down that three. His third three ball of the night, 10 points for Jordan Sims, 12 point. Roadrunner lead, White, the runner with the left hand, good, Number and a two, foul. Caleb White, basket is good. The foul Fouls on, on the Keon Roadrunner Lewis, 44. Keon his first Lewis. of the night. His second personal, first Had team a chance foul at the old-fashioned three-point play to for the Caleb, White. Two Caleb White. Caleb White, he, Pirates, Caleb he's going to be a player in this one. league. He's a freshman right now. He's a great driver going left, a very capable shooter. Shot 40% from three this year, so... He adds some weight to his body, becomes a little bit more aggressive. He's going to be a big-time scorer. Pressure by the Pirates nearly coming away with a steal. Nine-point game. Once again, 50-41. to 41. Lewis, bullet pass, deflected, and Richmond comes up with it for East Carolina. Robinson. They swing it around. Campbell wide open for a three. Campbell should thank Robert Richmond. I know he got the pass three. from Richmond too, but two defenders from UTSA both jumped to Richmond because he's such a big-time shooter, which a lot of teams would do, but Campbell makes him pay. Six-point game now, 50-44. to 44. Agussie backs away from Robinson. And this is where it's see if UTSA is tough enough. I mean, everything's easy when things are going well and you're making every shot, but when the team starts making a run at you and you turn it over, let's see if they can answer. Campbell finds a wide open white for a three. No good. And Lewis brings it up the floor for the Roadrunners. Just under 18 minutes to play in the ball game. An 18-point lead for the Roadrunners, down to six now. Lewis gets it into McGregor. Another soft shot with the left McGregor. hand by the big man. And McGregor's just so strong and physical in there. He takes that jump stop, kind of puts you on your heels, and then he powers it up and just gets it on the rim. He's got great touch inside. He still hasn't missed tonight. McGregor with 11. The lead at 8 now. Zangary out high. Finds White. Now Campbell the drive, the floater, and the friendly roll. Two, Very Roberts aggressive Campbell. drives. Gave him a jab step, faked one way, went hard to the right, got to the paint, and nice little floater. Six-point game. Just under 17 minutes to play here in El Paso. Agussi to McGregor. Out to Sims. That three comes up short. And here comes East Carolina. Uh-oh. Richmond, another three. Good again! Saw it coming. you got to locate these three. guys in transition. ECU is very, very aggressive when they come coming at you on transition. Got to be able to find their best player, Richmond. Makes it a three-point game, and that ties the record. And a silly foul by Robinson. Whistled for the foul. Paris, number 11, Antonio and glares at his first Sean Casey. Second team foul. Sean Casey glared back. Yes, he <laughs> did. Correction, first team foul on ECU. Like a pretty obvious call. Roadrunners basketball. Shove in the back by Robinson. His first foul. First of the half on the Pirates. Little more than 16 minutes remaining. Lewis finds a wide open McGregor. As close as you can get, and that's Pirates his first missed shot of the night. So McGregor misses the most point-blank, the easiest Brandon shot, the dunk Stitt. shot. Doesn't get high enough, kind of just rattles it out and hits it off the shot clock. It's 
It's unfortunate for him, but the momentum has completely shifted from the way things were going in the first half. Chance to tie, perhaps, for the Pirates. White looks to Jeff Lebo for the play call. Richmond couldn't get that three away. White will drive and get fouled. It Thousand goes on Philip Jones. For Phillip Jones. Number His one on Jones, number two TSA. on UTSA here. Like to thank the following local supporters and providers of this year's courtesy cars for the Conference USA Basketball Championships. Casa Ford Lincoln. Rudolph Dealerships. Sunland Park Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Hoy Fox Automotive Group. Hyundai of El Paso. Dick Poe Family of Dealerships. Fans, be sure to grab your 2014 Conference USA Basketball Championship Souvenir Program. It's absolutely free and it's filled with information about Conference USA players and teams, including rosters, stats, and news of interest. Basketball. By as many as 18 in the first half. Roadrunners stay in the zone. Richmond, the quick three up, and there's the record. Number one, Akeem <laughs> I just Richmond can't get for three. over this, how open he has been all game. UTSA, if, if they were just cut him off, shut him down, they would be... The game may be over by now, but he just continues to have space against the zone, against man. He's always open, and he's made him pay with seven three-pointers. He's got 146 on the year. That is the Conference USA single-season record, and it ties the game Falls at the 52 for the two, moment. Caleb White, Caleb White picks up his third foul, foul now. Three team fouls. And it will send Philip Jones to the line with a chance Jones, to give the Roadrunners the lead two. once again. Tied at 52 with just over 15 minutes to play. And the poor free throw shooting. One more for Jones. May come back to haunt the Roadrunners despite the fact they're shooting 65% from the floor. Yeah, and ECU's made their free throws, and that kept them in the game for a little bit. UTSA hasn't made theirs, shooting 50% from the line. Missed them both, and now a chance for the Pirates to reclaim the lead. Campbell. The good head fake finds Richmond in the corner. There's number eight. Richmond for three. I don't even know what to say anymore. He's, he's got eight threes, and he continues to be open. Go box in one. Just put a face, face guard and do something different. Eight threes for Richmond. All of his points coming from behind the arc, and the Pirates have the 55-52 lead. Jones with it. Backs it out to Agassi. Yeah, UTSA is just shell-shocked right now. Sims comes up short on that three, but Road East Carolina basketball. can't corral the rebound. So it stays with the Roadrunners. A new shot clock. Twenty-four points for Richmond, the second team all conference USA selection. They get it into Agussie. Sims finds Jones in the far corner. 
uh, Gussie returns to Lewis. Wide open Sims. That three won't go. And a push off on Caleb White underneath. Fouls on the keep Pirates, it number two. With the Roadrunners, and that's White. the fourth foul on His Caleb fourth White. Personal foul. And they're going to need him down the stretch. Foul. He's coming out of the game, the but Pirates. before that foul, EC has just done, done a better job Checking closing out. Carolina the close out there four, made Jordan Prince Sims Williams, have to rush his shot. He missed it easily, but UAB, or ECU's basketball. just got to do a better job boxing out. White checks out. Prince Williams comes back in for Jeff Lebo. Agussi spotting up in the corner. Can't knock down the three. And the Pirates a chance to stretch their lead now. Just under 14 minutes to play here in El Paso. Robinson finds Richmond. That's an NBA three number for number one, nine of the night. For the three. Akeem Richmond show goes on. Make him floor the basketball. I don't care where he is on the court, inside of half court. Make him dribble the basketball. Once again, the Roadrunners throw over top of the pressure. They're down six now, though. And a steal. Robinson takes it away to Richmond, who spots up for the three. Fight for that rebound. Out to Richmond. That one off the mark badly. And Lewis quickly into the front court to the basket and draws the foul. Falls on the Pirates, number 11. And the Tony foul will Robinson. go on Robinson. His second personal foul. Number two on Fourth him, number four foul. now. The Pirates is at East Carolina. Yeah, good job by Lewis. Just the attack attack two, them back. He's had a couple Thomas. good looks at three to extend this game. Lewis gets the rebound. Coast, coast, coast. I thought he was Lewis. shooting there, but refs thought otherwise. Brooks Thompson thought he was as well. But instead, the Roadrunners inbound. 12.55 to play, and East Carolina has built a six-point lead here in the second half thanks to four three-pointers in seven minutes by Akeem Richmond. Thomas and an illegal screen. Yeah, this, this has been a 24-point swing in a matter foul. of 11 minutes. Uh, they they, they led by 18 foul. with three UTSA. minutes to go in the first half. Pirates now basketball. 12 minutes left. ECU's up six. That's just a crazy swing right there. And the Roadrunners still shooting 65% in the game, but now they trail by six. Robinson. To Stith, who's back in there. Now Richmond has it, but an illegal screen on Prince Williams. Gives it back to UTSA. Yeah, it looks like a little extra talking four. going on between Sims and some players. Williams. And it looks like a this double technical coming. Foul. We've got technical fouls. Rick yeah. Randall stepping in. And a double technical. There's been some jawing going on. And now Rick Randall says, I've heard enough from everybody. Yeah, and I, I think it started with Sims and Richmond. Richmond kind of just laughed it off, whatever he was saying to him. And somebody else from ECU joined in, and Sims didn't take kindly to that, went up and bumped him. So I don't know if it's going to be a double tech or just a tech on Sims. But you can tell he's not happy with giving up nine threes to Richmond. They went man-to-man -man in the last possession, tried to slow him down, and they drew a, a foul on an illegal screen. So it worked, but they're a little frustrated right now having such a big lead and having it go away. The officials talk it over. And now Rick Randall going over to the scorer's table to explain what he thinks he saw. And now they'll go to the monitor to see if there was any extracurricular activity. Yeah, I don't think there was any punches or pushes. I think it's just a couple, couple tough guys. You know, they go chest to chest, kind of have to eye each other down, stare at each other and see, see who's going to be the tough guy or what, what are they going to say to each other. But there's no, there's no point in having that. It's a close game. It's been a competitive game all night long. Just let the play do, your, do the talking. Akeem Richmond with nine three-pointers in the ball game. 
season high 31 against UTSA where he was perfect from the free throw line in that game, 15 of 15. Now he's nearly perfect, <laughs> or so it seems, from outside the arc. Yeah, every time he takes a three, everybody I think in, the, in this arena is holding their breath. They're kind of getting caught up in the moment. He's got nine threes with 12 minutes left. He's a chance to add on to that. He's already set their single game record hitting 10, 10 of 17 one game. I think he has a chance of blowing past that one tonight. UTSA basketball. So double technical, Paris Roberts Campbell for East Carolina and Jordan Sims for UTSA. No free throws since it's a double technical and the Roadrunners with the basketball. Agussi spinning in the lane, scoops it up and has it smothered. Here's Richmond weaving his way up the floor. Campbell's quick three, wouldn't fall. And the Roadrunners in transition. Nice find. Jones couldn't finish, though. And a jump ball called. Jump ball the call. The Possession arrow will to UTSA. keep it with UTSA. Official time on the floor. Official Jeff time Lebo out. laughing at that call from Sean Casey. Thought it should have been a foul call on the Roadrunners. But like instead, the following local supporters, supporters of this year's CUSA Basketball, basketball Championships. Supreme Laundry, Western Refining, Howdy's, Hunt Companies. To stay informed tonight and throughout the year, go to conferenceusa.com to get all the latest stats, highlights, and information. Log on tonight and follow us on Twitter and Facebook, as well as using hashtag CUSAChamp. The butterfly, uh-uh, that's all, let me see the two zero. Checking in for the Roadrunners, 45, Kai Bjorn Sherman. Roadrunners basketball. Now, Robinson high off the glass, couldn't get it to go. And the Roadrunners have it once again, down six, 58-52. Agussi to Thomas. Thomas backs it out, finds Sherman on the high post, who makes a bad pass. Pirates pass. Turnover number 15 now on UTSA. And here, here comes McGregor. When, when McGregor's Checking in the game, that's where his UTSA position is in the middle of the zone, and they're able to get McGregor. him there. And he's able to either power it to the rim, get it up on the glass for a basket, or he's able to see the floor and hit the weak side for some shooters. Sherman is this big guy. He's good inside, but he kind of threw that one away, got a little nervous with it. 11-10 as the clock ticks here in the second half. East Carolina leading it now. Robinson. Roadrunner staying in the man-to-man -man now as Richmond has successfully shot them out of the zone. Paris Roberts, Campbell the drive and the foul. <laughs> Brooks Thompson. Fouls on the Roadrunners, number 32, Jordan Not happy Sims. with that whistle on Jordan His Sims. fourth personal foul. That's going to be Sims' fourth. To the line for East Carolina, number 22, And now number five Paris and a half Roberts, on UTSA. And Paris Roberts-Campbell to the line again. 
18 points in the ball game for the junior out of Charlotte. And misfires on that one, one as Keon Campbell. Lewis returns now. Yeah, he's had a big Back night after only having two points against them Keon in the first Lewis. meeting. He's, he's come to play tonight. Campbell with three threes in the ball game. Trying to make it a seven-point Pirate lead now. So he's got 19. Akeem Richmond with 27. Roadrunners get it across. Thomas flips to McGregor, who wisely backs it out. And that press was just kind of a token three-quarter court to slow him down, make him run a little clock, and it actually sped them up, and they almost turned it over there. Thomas out to Lewis. Thomas launches the three. Number Haji two, Thomas Haji hits his Thomas first three-pointer three. of the night. That's the second three of the second half and only the third field goal since halftime for the Roadrunners. Haji Thomas has given him a big spark off the bench tonight. He's making a lot of plays, but that's a huge basket for him just to kind of take a deep breath and realize that they can still score against the zone. 59-55, Pirates leading. Just past the midpoint of the second half. Richmond, number 10. Number one, Richmond for three. It's just a simple roll replace right there. Augusta just got caught watching the roll, man. He was there on the catch, but he's a little undersized and wasn't able to contest as a bigger guard would normally do. Five in the first half, five here in the second half for Akeem Richmond. He's got 30 on the night. Seven-point Pirate lead. Agussi, the leaner from the foul line, wouldn't go. And Richmond corrals a rebound. And look at Richmond telling his team to slow it down, relax right now, just being a senior leader out there on the court. Slow it down and get me the ball. Just over nine minutes to play. 62-55. They are being patient offensively. Robinson gets a screen, finds Richmond, who frees himself for another one. one 11 three-pointers three for just, a game Richmond. He moves so well without the ball. And so after on a screen and roll, he replaces. He has a big guy on him. One little roll simple shot rolls. fake leaves his feet, creates some space. All he needs is a little bit of daylight, and he knocks it down. And a timeout taken by Brooks Thompson. 30-second timeout. It becomes a full one here in the second half. 8.41 remaining. The Pirates now a 10-point lead over UTSA. This is the 2014 Conference USA Basketball Championship. Live from El Paso on the CUSA Digital Network. Akeem Richmond having a career night here in El Paso. That is his 11th three-pointer of the ball game. His prior best had been 10 threes. He hit 10 twice in his career, but he's got 11 here tonight. And he's approaching his career high in scoring, which is 37, which he's also done on two occasions. After the timeout, Thomas, the runner off the window, and a rebounding foul on Haji Thomas, who then gets a technical foul. 
And these refs two, have been kind of short with these players Technical all night long. And the players have been giving them some Haji dirty Thomas. looks, but right there, he just had enough of it. Thomas now has He's send Akeem Richmond to the free throw line. Maybe he'll score. Going to the line see if he can score Pirates. inside the arc. Number one, Akeem Richmond to shoot two. He has a relatively clean line. No two-point baskets, no free throws on the night. Just 11 three-pointers. And he keeps it somewhat spotless. <laughs> I think the crowd is stunned. He actually missed. They want him to back up. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's yelling back up. He hits one out of two. 32 points. Back in for the road runner. For Akeem number Richmond. 32, Jordan 34. Sims for number two, Haji Thomas. Excuse me, 34. Pirates basketball. And it's, not had, like, it's not like he's taking bad shots or ill-advised shots. He's had good looks all night. He's shooting an unbelievable percentage from deep. 31 I, in the first meeting. He's got 65 against the Roadrunners in two meetings this year, and we still have better than eight minutes to go tonight. Williams down the lane. A hard foul. Fouls on the Roadrunners, number 20. And Enrico it goes on McGregor. McGregor. His third That'll personal be his foul, third. 18 fouls. And Richmond is just taking the life the out of UTSA. I mean, they they just look four. stunned Williams over there on their bench, their players. Two. They can't believe a guy's hit 11 three-pointers against them. Prince Williams looking for his first points of the night. Averaging almost nine Back a game for the Pirates, tonight. 25, Brandon Stiff for 34. And Brandon Stiff Zangari. returns, giving Zangari, uh, Zangari a break. for Williams. Another one coming for Williams. Misses both, and McGregor pulls down the rebound. 66-55, ECU leading by 11 now. Just over eight minutes to play. Richmond with 34 of East Carolina's 66 points tonight. Agussi from long range off the back iron. McGregor mistimed his jump, but it will Road stay runners, with the Roadrunners. Official timeout on the floor. A timeout. Official timeout. 7.56 to play. Conference USA would like to express our gratitude to the El Paso community for their hospitality and support of this championship. Special recognition goes to the El Paso Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Sun Bowl, and the UTEP Athletic Department. USA would like to thank the following local supporters of this year's CUSA Basketball Championships. Glazers, Allen F. Distributors, Superior Imaging Experts. Roadrunners basketball. Roadrunners inbound. Lewis has his shot swatted away. Robinson with numbers. Couldn't connect with Stiff. And it's out of bounds. Over to UTSA. Coach Lebo with his hands on top of his head. Fast break. You want your players to make a simple bounce pass, make a simple play, but Stiff is a big time athlete. So I don't, I don't have a problem with EC trying to, <laughs> trying to go with the lob right there. Still an 11-point Pirate lead. Lewis with it. To Sims, quick three up, too strong. And Prince Williams reels that one in. Pirates now content. 
to be patient offensively. Stith with it. Whips it down low to Williams. And he'll back it out and work a little more clock. Just over seven minutes remaining. Campbell will drive. Double team blocked from behind and taken by Jones, who turned it right back over. Robinson corrals it. And Jeff Lebo wants a timeout. Timeout, East Carolina. Brooks Thompson out near midcourt barking at the officials. I don't know if he wanted to travel or if he's upset they reset the shot clock. It seemed like the ball was kind of juggled around there. He was arguing the shot clock should not have reset. And has a word with Darren George wanting to know why it reset. But possession apparently had indeed changed. And Jeff Lebo sensing further trouble, spends a timeout. Shot clock at 33 now after the reset. And East Carolina will have it with the 11 point lead, a 29 point turnaround for East Carolina tonight. Yeah, and they've made shots, they've stayed consistent offensively, they probably got a little hotter here in the second half, but UTSA has gone ice cold and it's against the same zone ECU is running in the first half. They just can't seem to figure it out and the shots that they were taking and hitting in the first half. They're getting, they're just not making them right now. Still only three baskets since halftime for UTSA. But they're still in this game. If they can find their shooting touch here in the final 640. It's going to be four on four here on the offensive end for ECU as Jordan Sims is just not going to leave Akeem Richmond's side. Williams with seven to shoot and a hand check by Jones. Bails him out. That is the second foul on Phillip Jones. Foul, that's the 19th foul, foul now, so a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Prince Williams. For and that's a perfect Prince possession for Williams. ECU. They have the lead, the running clock. Shooting they have game. some action going towards the basket late in the shot clock, and they draw a foul to go to the free throw line and extend the lead. Williams has his first point of the night one now. For Williams. Yeah, he hasn't done a lot offensively, but he's been solid on the defensive end. He had a couple nice assists early in the game, so hasn't done a lot scoring-wise, but he's had a very solid game for them. It's both ends of the one and one there. Pirates shot 50% in the regular season meeting with the Roadrunners. They're now at 51% here tonight. Lewis for the Roadrunners to Agassi, who decides against the three. They find Lewis in the corner. He can't buy one. The rebound for Jones and the putback. And they're going to have to just find ways to score. The shots aren't falling right now. They're shooting 50% on the game, but that's probably because of the inflated first half. But they're just going to have to be all over the glass and try to claw crawl their way back, claw their way back in into this game. Just under six minutes to play. Pirates by 11 with the ball. Robinson to Williams. Again, content to work clock. Williams driving off the glass, no. Follow up by Stith, wouldn't go, but another chance for East Carolina. Jeff Lebo yells the play call with five and a half minutes remaining. Robinson gets it to Richmond. An off balance three comes up short. Cleared by Jordan Sims. Here's a Gussie quickly up the floor. Behind the back dribble, tied up, and a jump ball call. That's going to give it back to ECU. Gussie dribbled into East trouble Carolina. that time. Yeah, Gussie's a little frustrated after the hot start. He probably had 10 points in the first 10 to 12 minutes of the game. Had to go to the bench with two fouls. Hasn't been able to get it going since he's been back playing. They just, they just look a little frustrated right now, being down 11 with five to go. 68-57, and pressure now in the full court by the Roadrunners. But Robinson darts up the floor, gets it to White. Robinson, the floater off the glass too strong. Zangari the rebound, but they'll call him for a push-off to get it. Yeah, I don't agree with that call. I think I thought he had position. It wasn't that he extended his arm. If you extend your arms, clearly that's a foul. But 
he had position on a smaller player, just kind of put his arm up to get a little bit balanced there, and refs call a foul and extends uh, UTSA to the line. Seventh team foul on the Pirates, so a one and one now for Phillip Jones, who has struggled from the stripe. He is just one of six from the line tonight. The Roadrunners shooting 50% from the foul line tonight. Gets the roll that time. And when you're shooting 76% in the first half, you don't think free throws may matter all that much. Yeah, but they, they would dearly love those free throws now. They made three extra ones. We, we're going to have a six, seven-point game, and that's much more manageable with five minutes left. Instead, it's a 10-point margin. Pirates on top, and Williams is hurt. And a, a timeout called. Williams timeout, East Carolina. injured. Started hopping with the basketball. And a timeout called. Williams called the timeout. He knew he was in trouble. It looks like he tweaked an ankle or something. He was able to keep his dribble alive, which was impressive. Still not turn it over, but savvy play to call a timeout as well and keep possession of the basketball. 4.54 to go. Pirates with a couple of timeouts left if they should need them. And UTSA with three. The Roadrunners have been called for nine fouls, so the next one on them will put the Pirates in the double bonus. East Carolina whistled for seven fouls here in the second half. 4.54 showing on the clock. And a 10-point lead, 68-58. They have outscored UTSA, the Pirates have, 30-11. to here in the second half. At UTSA with 47 points at halftime. Can't buy a bucket. I mean, the, the way this game has gone, UTSA is probably going to go on some crazy run and end up winning by 15 in the last <laughs> five minutes. But, you know, EC is, is in control of this game right now. Let's see if they can close it out. Robinson, some nifty ball handling. Away to White. Shot clock at 10 now. Campbell with it. Fouled by Agussi with six seconds on the shot clock, and that's another near-perfect possession. Yeah, and I, I'd like the ball in Campbell's hands late in the shot clock. I know Robinson's their point guard, but when he has the ball in his hands, he's just coming at you downhill like a freight train, and all you can do is follow him or let him get to the basket. And he'll go to the line for two now. 19 for Campbell. Give him an even 20. Back in for the Pirates, number 25, Brandon Stith. Brandon Stith number returns two, as the White. freshman Caleb White checks out. And they're going a little offense, Campbell. defense here. He's got four fouls, so they're going to save him. 34 points for Akeem Richmond. And still 20 for Paris Roberts Campbell. That's a heck of a night. 54 of the 69 coming from two players. 69-58, the Pirates lead it by 11. Closing in on four minutes to play. Agussi. Just look how much more active this zone is right now as opposed to the first couple possessions of the game. Agussi grabbed and fouled by Antonio Robinson. That'll be his third. That's the eighth now on East Carolina. And Caleb White right back into the game, replacing Stiff. Agassi at the line. Ten points on the night, but all of those coming in the first half. Since he picked up those two fouls, he really hasn't been the same guy offensively. Gets the front end. Yeah, and we'll have his bonus now. It's, it's tough as a player. You know, he's used to playing so many high minutes. You get that second foul, and you have to go to the bench. And you have to sit the last ten minutes of the first half, sit through halftime. You kind of lose that rhythm you were in, and it's a little hard to get back to that. It's both ends of the one and one. So Augusti with a dozen now. And the lead cut to nine for the Pirates with just over four minutes remaining. Robinson double teamed. Ahead to White. And now to Campbell, who's going to back it out. And once again, they go to work on the clock. And good job breaking the pressure right there, not rushing it, taking a quick shot. They just broke the initial press, got it over half court. Now they can run some clock and run some offense. 
69 to 60, the Pirates lead. Seven now to shoot. Robinson, the crossover, hooks it down low, Zangari, the foul, and the basket. Once again, the shot clock winding down one second on the shot clock when the foul committed by Philip Jones as Zangari. Like thank the following local supporters of this year's CUSA Basketball Championships. Menchies, Costco, DSI Graphics. Lucchese Boots serving boot fans since 1883. Sam Lucchese Jr.'s comprehensive understanding of the human foot inspired him to create a boot design that fits like no other. So if you're looking for a boot that is perfect and a match for style and comfort, look no further than Lucchese Boots. You know you make me want to shout, kick my heels up and shout, throw my hands up and shout, throw my head back and shout, come on now, don't get to say you will. Come on now, don't get to say you will. Come on now, don't get to say you will. Don't get to say you will. Come on now, don't get to say you will. Come on now, don't get to say you will. Come on now, don't get to say you will. Come on now, don't get to say you will. Come on now, don't get to say you will. Come on now, don't get to say you will. To the line for East Carolina, number 34, Michael Sangari to shoot one. Four points for the sophomore out of Lewisbury, Pennsylvania. ECU shooting on almost 49% from the floor. And the Roadrunners down to under 48%. They have gone 4 of 18 from the floor here in the second half. It is a 12-point lead with 325 remaining. Lewis finds Jones, excuse me, Sims, to Lewis, who lost it going up, but that's because he was fouled. And Paris Roberts, Paris Roberts Campbell will pick up his fourth. His fourth personal foul. You know, you no know, 12 point Back game, three minutes left. Pirates, number two, UTSA, a little frustrated. They've, they've blown Brandon a big lead. Step. You just hope nothing to silly happens here in these last three minutes. 44, it has been Lewis a, a chatty two. game, really, all the way around. Correction, Players, one coaches, one. officials, the whole lot. Yeah, in, the, in these games, you know, in a neutral site, far from your home school, where there's not a lot of fans. The fans can Lewis almost just hear bonus. everything. Everything the, the coach says to the refs, the players are talking to each other. So it's a, it's a unique environment. 11-point game as Lewis looks for his 10th point of the night now. And now 72-62. Roadrunners are still very much in this with better than three minutes to go. But they've got to find some offense and get some stops on the other end. And it's almost like they don't have a press where they're forcing traps. That, that pressure is, is very token pressure where they're just kind of slowing the ball up the court. Robinson with it, backs it out now with the shot clock at 10. Robinson flips it out to Campbell. That three wouldn't go, and the rebound scooped up by Keon Lewis. Can the Roadrunners... Get it to single digits. Agussi flips to Sims for a three. That one short. Zangari the rebound. And they have gone absolutely ice cold here in the second half. Only the four made field goals. ECU alone is 7 of 12 from beyond the arc in this half. Roadrunner 6 of 10 from three in the first half. They're now 2 of 10 since halftime. 
Closing in on two minutes to go, still a 10-point game, and ECU more than happy to run the shot clock down again. It's at five. Robinson to White. Doesn't get the shot off. Shot clock violation. UTSA Before the shot basketball. clock expired. So a minute 53 left. And again, the Roadrunners a chance to get it to single digits as Stiff returns. Checking in for East Carolina. Replacing Caleb White. Brandon Stiff for number two, Caleb White. And they don't have to have threes at this point. Threes would certainly help, but they just need something quick. Yeah, they need something quick. They need something good for them to happen. They haven't had anything good happen to them this half. It seems all the balls are bouncing their way in the first half, and everything is going the opposite direction this half. Agassi will spot up for the three and get it to go in a quick Agassi timeout three. by Brooks Thompson. That's Agassi's first field goal of the second half. And that makes it a seven-point game with a minute 42 to go. Yeah, it gives them some three life. Agassi, after he hits that three, walks back to their huddle with a little bit of a swag. Seven points, a minute 42. They, they can force a steal here. Maybe force ECU into a quick shot. They've been running the whole shot clock down, getting a flat ball screen late, and then trying to find something in the last five seconds of the shot clock. But if they could speed them up, make maybe make them take a quicker shot, force a miss, or force a, ideally a turnover here full court, then things could get really, really interesting. One of the problems they may have, though, is if they have to put the Pirates on the free throw line, they're the best team in Conference USA shooting free throws. They're better than 71%. Yeah, they can all make him, but I'm sure Coach Levo's going to have a couple plays up his sleeve, some out of bounds plays to get Akeem Ritz in the basketball, knowing that they're going to fall. Each team with two timeouts remaining. And the Roadrunners will try to come up with a quick steal. Pirates basketball. 65. They got some takeaways in the first half. Robinson fouled by Agussi. As they're going to try to extend the Devon game now. Agussi called for his fourth. His fourth Everything a two-shot opportunity, foul. though, for the Pirates. And as Bobby said, just about all of them going to the line for the can Pirates. step to the line and make the foul shot. Yeah, that's Antonio interesting Robinson. that they just fouled right away. They didn't even try to, usually teams try to get one trap, maybe two traps in the backcourt, then don't foul until the ball's in the front court, but they elected to foul right away and try to make this game as long as possible. Robinson comes up short. And Back that's in why the they Pirates, did it. Number 20, 71 percent from the line. The 34. Then Gary checks Michaels out now. Gary. Stiff returns. One more for Robinson. A minute 40 to play. Robinson scoreless on the night. Has his first point. UTSA will trade two points for one point the rest of the way here to climb back into it. Eight point margin. A deep three by Agassi, up and Number good again. One, Agassi for three. And another three. timeout by the Roadrunner. Timeout, UTSA. That's his fourth three ball of the night. Brooks Thompson, the quick timeout. A minute 29 to go, and it's a five-point game. Yeah, I mean, 11 seconds ago, it was a 10-point game. Two threes and missed free throw. We got it down to a five-point game, so... You know, everything has gone UCS way this past two possessions. So if they can do the same thing again, get another quick foul, maybe hope for a missed free throw, then get another basket. We got a one possession game with a minute left. It's, uh, it's going to get a little tight here. Foul trouble. Another issue for the Roadrunners. Augusti, Thomas, and Sims all with four fouls. Harris Roberts, Campbell, and Caleb White each with four for East Carolina. They get it into Richmond. No, oh, if I were him, I would not pass that ball. I'd just wait for them to follow him. Near steal by Agussi in the backcourt, but Robinson gets it across. A minute 15 to go. White. Watched by Jones. Campbell now has it with 10 on the shot clock and a minute three to play. One minute, one minute Campbell remaining. With three to shoot to Robinson. Just before the buzzer Number hits 11, the big basket Antonio for East Robinson. Carolina. Junior with a tough shot late in the shot clock with the buzzer to extend it to a seven point lead under a minute. That's big time. His first bucket of the night, a Gussie's deep NBA three wouldn't go, but kept alive 
by the Roadrunners. Underneath, Jones fumbled it, gathers it back in, and knocks down the three. Phillip Jones. His first three-pointer of the night and just his third of the year. Yeah, two of four on the year. It doesn't take him. He's not a pretty-looking shot at the free throw line, so I understand why he doesn't take many threes. But to give UTSA credit, they have made plays here late in this game to stay in it. Wondering where these shots were about five minutes ago when they couldn't buy a bucket. They're down four now, 75-71 with 37 seconds to play. That's the final timeout for the Roadrunners. East Carolina with a couple and the possession arrow, should it become a factor, also favored UTSA. Don't forget, four games on tap tomorrow here on the CUSA Digital Network. Tulane in North Texas get it started at noon mountain time. Old Dominion and Marshall will follow around 2.30 local time. And then in the evening session, it's UTEP taking on the winner of this game, followed by UAB and Charlotte in the last game of the day. Louisiana Tech, Tulsa, Middle Tennessee, and Southern Miss all finished tied for first in the league and all received the double bye and they will not play their first game until Thursday here in El Paso. You know, the fact that UTSA elected not to foul that last possession, and they, you know, ECU hits a jumper as the shot clock expired. Had they fouled earlier and gave up two points, there'd probably be an extra 25, East 30 Carolina seconds on the basketball. clock right here for them to work with and maybe defend this possession. Pressure again, they get it into Richmond who will race up the floor, cradle it, and get fouled. The foul on Keon Lewis. Fouls on the Roadrunners, number 44. Stops Keon the clock Lewis. with 32 seconds His to go. His second personal foul. Hey, Richmond's not the Going to most the line confident East ball hand, so he's bringing the ball up the court. Richmond. UTSA was two. tracking him from behind. Thought they were going to get a steal there. Then when he picked it up, he may have dragged his pivot foot as well. And I thought they could have tied him up. They have the possession there. If they just had a little more savvy about him, they could have tied him up and gotten a turnover that way. Richmond hits the first free throw, an 86% foul shooter on the year. Agassi for number two, Haji Thomas. Five-point game. One more for Richmond. So it's two possessions regardless. But Richmond has another to make it a six-point game. 36 Back in points for the Pirates, number four, for Prince Richmond. Williams for number one, one Akeem Richmond. Shy. Matching Checking his in for San career Antonio, high number in a game George 37. Matthews. And now and the Pirates zero, will James apply Williams. some pressure to force UTSA to use a little extra clock. 77-71. Agussie will race up the floor. And a deflection out of bounds by Paris Roberts Campbell. Roadrunners basketball. With 27 seconds to play. Matthews will throw it in. Gets it right back. Finds James Williams in the corner. Back to Matthews. That's a two. That's an air ball. But a rebounding foul underneath against East Carolina. The foul on Caleb White, and that's Fouls his fifth. East Carolina's number two, Caleb White. So he fouls out with 20 seconds to go and scored nine points in the ballgame. That's, that's not exactly what Jeff foul. Lebo wanted. And that's seeing UTSA go to the line with the clock Back stopped. For the Pirates, yeah, the first one. half of that possession was Richmond. phenomenal. They were moving around. They, the they had overloaded the one side, and ECU matched it. Jones. They forced a terrible shot by the Williams. Is Sims, then they just don't block out, block out on the backside. And Sims goes to the line to score with the clock stop. It's definitely not what you want. Two shot opportunity. And the first one good. One more for Sims. Sims now with 11. Five point game with 20.8 seconds to go. It's a four point game. Get it into Richmond. Weaving his way up the floor, nearly traveled. Shoots it ahead to Robinson. And the foul given by McGregor with 10.8 seconds to play. 
Fouls the number yeah, I thought Richmond thought they were going to foul him right away. They didn't. Probably a savvy and smart McGregor. move by them because it would have been a 10 second violation in the backcourt. But the line, he does get it over and waste four, a good amount of time in that possession. Two. And Prince Williams to the line where he's two of four tonight. Ten point eight seconds to go. Williams trying to make it a five point game. Timeout, East Carolina. And a timeout taken timeout. by Jeff Lebo. A 30 second timeout. They've got one left, but they are leading by five now. 78 73 with right around 10 seconds to play in the ball game. He's probably telling them right now just not to foul at all. There's 10 seconds left. UTSA has to go the length of the court, score, get a turnover, score again, and ECU has a timeout if they need to take one here after a basket to get inbound the ball. So a lot is a lot is going well right now for ECU. They are, they're in control of this game. They just want to make sure they close it out the right way. It's a box score that if you just glance at, you're going to think, oh, it's a good game, close game. But if you study it a little more closely, you're going to see just how remarkable it was with some of the individual performances and UTSA basketball. the momentum swings in this game. Final 10 seconds. Agassi knocks down his Agassi fifth three. three of the night. And it's a two-point game. And a quick foul with five seconds left. Agassi is a tough cat. I mean, he has made big shot after big shot. And he takes these deep Fouls threes with confidence zero. after James going Williams cold for a big stretch of this foul. game. 21 for Agassi. To lead to UTSA, line, James Carolina, Williams commits four. that foul. Prince and Williams, Prince Williams will go to the line. He can salt it away if he makes them both. 5.3 to go. And the Roadrunners are going to have a chance. And this is going to be interesting if he makes this. Does ECU elect to foul? Uh, that's the big debate going on up three. Three-point game. Back in Stiff Pirates, comes back in. And Jeff Lebo timeout, going to spend East his Carolina. final timeout. 79-76. Made three-pointers. And a couple of missed free throws by East Carolina has given UTSA a chance with 5.3 to play. Yeah, they were down 10 the minute 40 left in this game, and now it's a, a one possession game with 5.3 seconds. Plenty of time to get a good look. You're gonna get three, four dribbles out. with that amount of time on the clock, depending on where you catch it. But is ECU gonna foul? I'm, I'm thinking that's why he took the timeout. He's talking over with his staff right now, trying to tell his players when to foul, where to foul. Um, it's. It's a touchy, it's, it's, a, it's a hard thing to decide, yeah. should we do it, it should we not, it all depends on where they are on the court, but uh, it is the right play to do to follow. East Carolina led by 13 with six and a half minutes to go. After trailing by 18 with three minutes to go in the first half, a 31 point turnaround in this game. And now, the Roadrunners are trying to have the big finish to force overtime. 79-76, both teams are out of timeout. And the Roadrunners will have to go the UTSA length of the floor. UTSA basketball. Agussie with it. Top of the key for the tie, just short. And East Carolina survives. Your final score. He got East a great Carolina look at it. Looked UTSA like it was dead on, but just a little bit short. And a big sigh of relief.